I'm Rebecca. And I'm Hunter. This, this is the Family Show! Folks, welcome back to my top 100 games of all time. I'm Hunter. This is Rebecca. We're looking at my number 90 to 81 today. What? If you oh, watched really? the end of my last video, you know there's five new games. Our first new games of the list. I'm excited about talking about about those. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get it right started. Right, man. I'm, I'm not English. <laughs> We're gonna English this. <laughs> Let's get it started right away with a brand new game on the list. And that is... La Graha. La Granha. La Granha. <laughs> I refrain from comment. <laughs> La Granha. La Granha. So tell us about this game. So this, this game, you are building a farm. Doesn't sound very exciting. But it is, because it's got some, a cool thing I like. You basically have your little farm board, and you're sliding cards under the sides, under the bottom, and all over the place to upgrade your farm to make it do all sorts of cool things. You're filling up your barrow. Very strange. They call it a barrow. Fill up your barrow full of goods, and you send it to market for victory points! Great game. It's a great... Um, I just like the, how you upgrade... Different people will upgrade different things and have different abilities. and do, Basically, you start off all pretty much the same, and mm -hmm. then as time goes by, your farm is very different from the other players. You're doing things more efficiently than others. You're upgrading goods. You're doing all sorts of fun stuff. Very yearly, very fun. La Granja. Ooh. No comment? Your pronunciation and your English terrify me. La Granja. Yeah, I like this game. I... I thought it was weird at first as I'm looking at the board because you have like pieces taken out of it. But it's neat because they're multi-purpose cards, so where you put them right. shows exactly that portion of the card. And I thought that was pretty neat because you don't see stuff like that in yep. many games. So that was the first thing that made this game stand out in particular for me. Yep. Yep, I like it. It's a great, um, just a good midweight Euro game. Really solid. Um, plays real smooth. Um, mm -hmm. What more to say? Who doesn't like filling a barrel of goods and delivering it to market? La Granja. My number, 90. I didn't say... Oh, I, didn't, I don't have to say. It's a new game. It went on the list last year. <laughs> Easy enough. Well then. We'll keep the new game trend going with my number 89. And that is... Council of Four. Wow. I'm almost surprised this is this low on the because... list. Because... One play? Yeah, I think we've only played this one time. So that's, but we pretty, fell in love that's pretty good for one it. time. Oh, I love this game. This game is so much fun. Um, basically, you are... I'm not sure what the theme is. You're influencing council people <laughs> to take control of different areas, different territories. But what I like about it most is when you take control of those areas, every adjacent area that you have to that area fires off and you get bonus. So it's like it's like a, like a popcorn bonus. So you do this one and... Boop, boop, or your bonuses go off. Pew pew! Is that what it's like? <laughs> Something like that. And at the end of the game, you get bonuses for different controlling different areas, like having influence in different areas, different control. Um, there's all these tracks you're trying to go up on. It's all sorts of crazy fun. It's just a really solid, fun little Euro game. I, I, like I said, I like the, the combo. You kind of you gotta you have to decide, do I want to get lots of combos and get lots of stuff? Or do I want to go for the area control? Because you got to get the area control bonuses. You got to kind of spread out all over the board. Yeah. Um, and then if you obviously if you do that, then you're not triggering all those bonuses. So it's kind of a deciding which way to go. I think last time you did a lot of the bonuses, and I did a lot of the trying to get all the area spread all over the board. Mm -hmm. So you got a lot more bonuses, but I got a lot more victory points at the end for having. But it's evenly areas. weighted, right? We both had a pretty good opportunity for winning because yeah. of the way they balanced the game out, which is really cool. So, like it, like it a lot. It's got it's way overproduced. It's a Simon game, so it's a overproduced. That's what makes it fun. It's an I overproduced Euro game. Let's see if I can pull pull out the miniatures real quick. Yeah, you, you need um, to see these. They're pretty amazing. Let you take a little peek at the miniatures. 
for no good reason, for a Euro game, <laughs> you have all these miniatures. But they're bright colors and they're they're, they're actually individual shapes, so. and I, I love it. So it's it, it's a Simon production, the one I have anyway. I think this is a reprint of the game. Uh, way overproduced, but which makes it it's awesome. Super super fun. Council of Four. There you go. That's new one to the list. So but wait, there's another new game. And that is Raiders of the North Sea, wow. my number 88. I'm kind of surprised this one's as low as it is. The reason is, there's another Viking theme game okay. that I much prefer over this game. Okay, okay. That makes sense then. This one is much more Yuri than the name, the game that shall not be named. Um, Raiders of the North Sea, it is, is cool. a Viking theme Euro game. You're basically gathering resources to build up your, your troops to go out and fight people to get more troops and victory points <laughs> so basically you uh you draft cards and those are your are your little army what do they call it your tribe your your something your raiding party i don't know what it is but anyway you have a bunch of cards and i would guess it. raiders because they, they're in the north sea i'm trying to say what the collective group is called but anyway vikings <laughs> your particular group of vikings now you're gonna make me look it up because you know what's better than vikings more vikings but anyway your, your your crew whatever you want to call it Oh, they all have different. The cards have different powers. They give you different abilities. So when you out and raid, you you they do give you different things. Maybe they give you more stuff. Maybe they help you fight the guys. Maybe they give you bonuses. Blah blah. Are they clans? I don't know. But anyway, so you go out and you raid and you get more resources to raid more to get more resources to raid more and get more resources. And eventually, you start raiding for victory points and you win the game. <laughs> and you have uh you have certain areas that will have uh, uh Valkyries. 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 There we go. Valkyries on them, and if you raid those areas, then some of your dudes die. But you potentially get bonuses for that. So you may want that to happen. So it's just a fun, fun little Euro, Euro Viking theme game. Viking the Euro game. Euro the Viking game? <laughs> I just want to hear you say Euro y and not make it sound weird. Euro y the Viking game. There you go. Okay. You were the Viking game. Anyway, my number 88, Raiders of the North Sea. New to the list. New game. Cool game. That's a fun one. Like but it. wait! There's another! There's another new game! <laughs> and that is Keyflower. Ah. Keyflower. Okay. Now this game has the potential to go up my list. But it gets punited. This is getting painful. It gets it got it got punished for uh, for not being played much and not being played in a while. But anyway, this is a great Euro game. This is a lot of a lot of Euro 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 lovers one of their favorite games. But it's not one of my favorite games. But I like it. So basically, you're drafting tiles, and it's, you have an interesting mechanism for drafting. You're putting meeples on the tile, on either side of the tile, whichever side. Is your side of the tile. You're putting meeples there, and once someone goes there, that denotes the color of the meeples that'll be used. So let's say I want this tile, I'll put like two yellow meeples down. In order for someone to outbid me, they're gonna have to put three yellow meeples to outbid me. And basically, your meeples hidden behind a shield, so you kind of gotta kind of have a little memory game of, of what meeples other people have based on how you want. Basically, if you, if you if I know Rebecca has only one yellow meeple, I could take advantage of that and put two me yellow meeples on the thing I want, and she's not gonna be able to get it. But anyway, you're, you're, you're building up your village. I think it's your village, and as you build it up, you got you get superpowers and special bonuses and all kinds of stuff um, within your village. And the goal is to just build the get the most victory points yep. by building the, the nicest village. You got um, let's see if I remember correctly. You got little ships that you're getting stuff off of um, that you're going to get as well. All sorts of fun, fun things, but. Like I said, we've only played, I believe we've only played this once. I really enjoyed it, but it was kind of, we were kind of like, do we know what we're doing? <laughs> well, that's what I was going to say. The only thing that was kind of a drawback was it combination of a lot of stuff up front to learn. Yeah. Plus the rule book. I don't think you liked the rule oh, book. Oh, the rule book was horrible. The rule book's horrible. So we had to kind of like go watch... Um, wasn't it Rodney Smith's video? I don't know who I watched, but I watched somebody. It probably was Watch It Played. Yeah, so we watched the Watch It Played how to, with the rules, <laughs> you know, as we're looking and trying to set up and all this stuff. It took a lot more work than it really should for a game. So I kind of felt that 
that rule book really... Yeah, uh, and what's sad it's is... It's so bad because it's like it ruins... For me, that kind of stuff is what ruins a game. Because I, I don't enjoy... Like trying to figure that kind of stuff right. out. I want to I, I sit enjoy down that and play. I know you. I know that's the kind of stuff because you like that more. So you were more willing to do that. But for me, I would have been like, mm, pass. I mean, so and it's a longer ish game, and with, so yeah, with the teach and the play, it, it took quite a while. So yeah, it, and it hasn't hit the table since. So, but uh, I really but, enjoyed but it. But when you can get past that, that's the thing. Is, is you shouldn't have to have a hurdle. That's what's frustrating because yeah. it's a good game and it doesn't deserve that. But when you can get past that, it's really cool. Yeah. It has a lot of really neat stuff in it. There's a lot going on. That's the kind of game you once you learn it, you should play it several times. Yeah, but, and then but you're not going to have to worry about that, right? We didn't do that. Whoops, we'll see how good our memory is. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Especially, like I said, I like the, the way they use the meeples to bid on things. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. Great resource management. Yep. A lot of, lot, of, lot of cool things going on in this yep. game. Um, really, really solid Euro game. Anyway, that is my number 87. New to the list. Key... Flower. Cool. All right. New world. New world. This when you thought I was done with new games. There's another new game. What? And that is my good buddy, Stefan Feld and Merlin. What's that face for? I thought this would be higher. Punitive. <laughs> oh my gosh. I tell you, man. If we don't play these games, they're getting punished. I'm in a punishing kind of mood. Anyway, Merlin. This <laughs> Merlin is probably falls in the middle of the my Stefan Felds I like um, maybe upper middle I don't know we'll see I don't know I haven't looked at my list but anyway it's my number eighty six I love this game mm -hmm. it's uh, got a lot going on we tried to play with the uh, King's Favor expansion and we didn't like the King's Favor expansion I don't remember that what did it do it, you go and you get bonuses oh and stuff yeah like that. that was one of those take it or leave it kinds it of was expansions. A, it was more of a distraction than the yeah a distraction from the cool stuff going on in the main game yeah I don't know but, but anyway yeah. this is a, this is, you don't need it then. this game has like all Steffenfelds a lot of things going on so you've got you got area control on a sideboard that you're doing. You got uh, you got your main board, and you're defending against people fighting you. And you get flags, and you're going on little quests, adventures to get things. But it all boils down to you got a piece. You have your piece on the board that you're moving clockwise around the board. You roll dice, and you move your guy so many spaces based on the, obviously what you're rolling the dice, and you take the action of that spot. But you also have a Merlin dice. There's a Merlin piece that everyone, that's kind of a community piece that everyone uses. And when you use the Merlin die, he can go either, either clockwise or counterclockwise. Because so he's then you crazy. Have, so then you have your, <laughs> your, what is it, three dice? Your two dice and your Merlin die. And you're sitting there yeah. going, okay, what combination do I want to do? I want to do this one first and then this one, then that one. Or do I do with that one first, then this one, that This one, one can be prone to analysis paralysis right. because of that yeah. so it's another one of those you kind of want to watch and be like okay we got to make a pact here don't spend too much time yeah because you could you could sit there and really plan that all out but then again it could all get chucked out the window as soon as you have a weird dice roll or right, something right. so it you know it's but no it's it's, but really, it's fun it's i mean a really fun game it's it's very point salady the theme is there <laughs> it's there i mean it's not I don't know why Merlin. I guess with this, he's a wizard. He can he can go clockwise and counterclockwise. I told you because he's wacky. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to influence different regions and things like that. It's just it's a it's a fun little game. It just doesn't get played much. And in fact, that I was tr actually trying to sneak this in before I did my list to play it again to see what would happen with it. But I, we didn't get it played, so it is what it is, and it is number eighty six. Stefan, Feld, and Merlin. Merlin looks sad because you put him lower on the list. Well, Merlin should get played more often. There you go, Merlin. You <laughs> heard him. All right. Well, if you were listening closely at the start, I said there were five new games. That was all five. That's all five, right in a row. So now these Boom. are now we're now we're into oldies but goodies. <laughs> My number eighty-five. One of the few games that I will make a fool out of myself laughing. <laughs> and that is Galaxy Trucker. Oh, gosh. This, <laughs> this game it. is a mess. Oh, a this mess. game is so funny. I, I, 
I pay, bet people do not like playing me within this game because I just laugh. Well, you're not laughing at them. You're just laughing at the stupid oh, things that happen. I'm laughing. Okay, you probably are. I am right. laughing at them. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you blew up your ship. So what the Galaxy Striker, the first part of it is a kind of a uh, real-time game where you're a speed game where you're you're getting tiles and you're putting together a ship. You're trying to build shields and lasers and storage areas and all sorts of stuff. And then the second half of the game, you blow your ship up. So basically, all this stuff, like asteroids come flying at your ship, like raiders fight your sh pirate raider, space raider guys attack your ship. All sorts of craziness happens. Start, stuff starts blowing up. Your shields get blown off. Your Half your ship gets blown off. You have no engines left. All sorts of craziness. <laughs> and I am just laughing and laughing. I think it's so funny. Someone, someone's like, got, someone's got like a ship and one big piece here, one big piece, and there's one little piece holding it together. And I'm just like hoping something will come flying in, and it just hits. I just, ah, it's so funny. Yeah, that happened to me. <laughs> and it was just, I had one weak spot on my ship, but of course, that's where the asteroid sheared it off, and it took off half my ship. So as it floats away, I hear hunters cackling. <laughs> But, in but, the depths but, of space. But I'm an equal opportunity laugher. Oh, you I, laugh at himself. I laugh too. at myself, too, when my ship is blowing up. I think it's hilarious. So, if you're the type of person who, when they build something in a game... It's your baby. It's, it's your baby. This is not the game for you, because your baby will die. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true, though. It's but so this true. is just a fun game. It's just it's just fun. Yeah. Uh, it, plays, it plays in about an hour. I don't care if wackiness happens. If, it, if this was a two or three hour game and oh, the ship was good. getting blown up, it'd be a different story. But it's just, it's just, I, I have fun playing this game. And, and, I'll, and when you're doing rankings like this at all, a lot of it just boils down to whether the game is fun or not. And this game is fun to me. So, there you go. Yeah, it's a pretty good game. I like it. Good times, good Gassy times. Cassie Trucker. Woo woo. All right. So where are we at now? All old games. Oh, down. and I didn't say it dropped. Oh, yeah. It dropped thirty-two spaces. But that, I think that is just the sheer volume of greatness. Well, twenty-eight new games to list. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, maybe. So but there's kinda, five below it. So I don't well. know. You do the so, math. All right, math, my number math. eighty-four. I really, 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 really like this game, but it got punished. Good grief! Because I don't remember the last time we played. The Gallerist. I have to set this off to the side. It's so big. <laughs> yeah, I know you can hide behind it. The Gallerist. La Certa. This is our first first entry into the world of La Certa. I'm not sure if this was his first game. I don't know. I don't know if it was No, this wasn't his first game. It was the first game we grabbed, I believe. This is the first game we owned. Yeah, this is the first. Yeah. But I don't know if it's his first game. Anyway, I don't know. I'm but anyway, sure it's, it's our first experience, and it blew us away. Two reasons. This was the heaviest game we probably had played had at played the time. Had played at the time, yes. And uh, it was just really neat how it was, for a heavy, heavy Euro game, his games are very, in my opinion, very thematic. Yeah. I and mean, you go and hire the artist. You have them build the painting. You, you put it on display. You do the you do promotions. You do the whole. It's just it just very very thematic. It's really game. Cool. for a heavy Euro game. It is in my opinion super thematic and it's really smooth. But it's a little bit of a beast to play. I don't know how long they say this game takes to play. It says it says two, it says two hours. I don't think it's two hours. Unless you know where it's really... If you played it often enough that you remember all of the rules, don't have to redo all that, you right. probably could. But for probably. us, since we play it so infrequently, oh, yeah, it's, that's more not, of a, it's more of a no, three-hour game. It's slow because you have to remember again, okay, how did I make my engine? Yeah. And it's... Because that's important. Yeah. It's really important in this. Because everything you do has such a far-reaching effect, you really want to plan out your moves thoroughly. Which is something he's really good at yep. designing. So, yep. I, yeah, it's a really neat game. I like the fact that the paintings in there are actual pieces of art. Yeah. The, they just have little miniature copies. Oh, and you have, a little, and you have a little and, easels that you put them on. And you have cute little easels you put them on. I, I Just the little touches like that. I was like, wow, that's really cool. Because a lot of times, and I, I think games like this have set the bar higher now. So it's a lot of those the newer, heavier stuff has more to it but little touches like that make the difference between some of those older heavy games where it's like hey push this little piece of cardboard over here and then push this little piece right. of card and it's boring looking yeah. this doesn't look boring at all yeah and yep. it's really pretty and people want to look at it i think and, and like i said this this gets a bit of punishment for not being played recently i think it'd be higher on the list because i really enjoy this is this is 
kind of reaching the upper limit of what I like in, in a game. Uh, it kind of bore, hits that mark of it's it's a lot, but not too much. Mm. And mm-hmm. occasionally I like to dip over that line, but this one's right on that line of where this, the sweet spot of the heavy heavy end of things. Mm-hmm. Um, just a really solid game. All his cool. games are solid. Um, all, we've played, what, three of them now, and we mm-hmm. loved all of them. So it's a really, really awesome game. So if you haven't tried a heavy Euro... This, this is, is great this one. is one that you might want to try out if you're trying to make that leap into the heavy euro world. Yeah, there you go. Because it's because you can make your fortune in the art world. <laughs> so says Lacerda. So that's my number eighty-four. The Gallerist. Such a good game. Yep, that's gonna fall. Why don't you put put, let's put it down a little further? <laughs> All right. So now we are on to another not new game. Okay. It dropped 41 places. Man, you just took your Because this has been replaced-ish. Ooh, I wouldn't say replaced. Replacement. There's a better version of this game? I don't know. But anyway, it is... Mysterious. Clank, the deck building game. Oh my no, goodness. A deck building adventure. It's an actual subtitle. Clank, a deck building adventure. And it is a deck building adventure. And boy is it. So, <laughs> deck builders... I'm kind of about them. There's certain ones I I like and certain ones I don't like. The ones I find I like the best are deck builders that have a board with stuff going on on the board. I'm not a fan of just the generic deck building thing. I won't name any names about generic deck building games. But it's got a board and there's fun stuff going on on that board that the deck building drives. I am all for it, and that is why Clank is my number 83. So th- in this game, Thanks. it's a deck building game. You're going, it's your adventure going deep, deep down in the dungeon to steal an artifact from an angry dragon and try to get it out alive. While you're doing that, you're building your deck. See? Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Filthy hobbitses stealing from dragons, huh? So it, it's, Oh, it's wonderful. It's a fun game. It, uh, I really like it. Um, it, I was surprised how much I liked it for as light as this game is. It's a fairly light game. Okay. But it kind of looks like it might be heavier. What Clank is, this is the best part, you're trying to sneak. <laughs> okay, but there are things, there are certain things like extra armor or, what was that one? There's a monkey in a suit or something is following you. I, there's craziness in there. Or maybe that was the other <laughs> that version. That was the other version. But yeah, there's there's crazy stuff. There's like in gestures too. and things yeah, like that. Yeah, gestures and stuff that are following you and not being quiet. And that's the clank. You're going clank, 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 clank while you're going down the hall. You're supposed to be being quiet. So every time you get a certain amount of those, you have to put them in this pool. And then if the dragon gets mad for various reasons, you have to put those in the bag with some other cubes and pull them out. And you get damage every time one of your cubes shows up. It's hilarious. Because, of course, inevitably... By the end of the game, Hunter's running around, and he might as well be just banging pots and pans, because he's, like, <laughs> grabbed his stuff, and he's like, I'm running for the door! And it's it's hilarious. Yeah. And very noisy. I do like the clank. <laughs> but, but the thing is, the, the cards that give you clank usually have a, a they really have super big, powers, right? big bon- bonus, yeah. so I like the big bonus, and I'll take the extra clank. And the noise. Yeah, so Hunter's screaming and banging pots as he's running yeah, out Yeah, but I got all kinds of money and <laughs> items and all kinds of stuff going on. <gasps> yeah. And then I drop dead, like, right near the, the uh, surface. If you're lucky, you have had a game where you're like, I'm going to get that 30-pointer, and he's all oh, right. down in the bowels of this huge cavern, and the dragon, like, just killed him. Yeah. Straight up. It's, I, he was had, a I had fun doing it. <laughs> it was pretty funny. No, it's a blast. Every time we've played this, it's just hilarious. So, yeah, if, so if you played some generic deck builders, and you're looking for, like, a next a next thing to step up to a, to a deck builder with a, a yep. board, this is a great one. This, this is... Uh, been a very popular game as of late um and again we'll talk more about a retheming ish of the game but the the, the the game in my opinion is different enough to warrant it being separate on the list so yeah. so we'll talk more about the mechanisms later but this time around my number 83 clank a deck building adventure <laughs> Hey, deck building adventure. You gotta remember to add that part. All right. Next up, my number eighty-two. It dropped only dropped ten places because this game. I wish I had more time to play this game. We never. This one got. This one got punished less because I just because I love this game so much. And that is 
Alien oh, Frontiers. I love this game. We played this game a lot back back in the day. It wasn't that long ago. <laughs> oh but my we don't goodness. play it as much as of late. But it is a dice placement space theme game. So you're rolling dice. You're putting those dice on the board to do all sorts of things in an effort to build colonies out on the board and do area control. If you control areas of, of Mars, that's where you're what you're doing, right? Is it Mars? No, it's just a planet. Just a ran random planet? Random planet X. Not the moon. I think it's a planet. Yeah, it's a planet, silly. Random at planet X. You get superpowers, and uh, as long as you control that, you have a superpower, and so you're vying for area control, and you get victory points, and you're doing a race. You're racing to a, a certain number of victory points. First one to get there, I believe, wins. There may be some kind of last round, whoever has the most type of thing going on, but... There's a point that triggers the end of the game. I don't remember if it's instant ending, but either way, it's a it's a race game with dice rolling, dice placement, area control, goodness. Yep, I like the way they implemented the theme in this one because it's just dripping with science fiction, and I love it. Each they have sections, little plates, if you will, um, on the planet. And each one of them is a sci-fi author's name. So you've got Asimov, Crater, or this and that. I, I just love it. I think it's fun. All the little touches like that. Um, I don't care about none of that. No, he doesn't. I'm just I do. I'm, I'm just kidding. kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. kidding. I'm but kidding. It's, it's one of those dice games, too, where the dice placement, you have enough variety that you can kind of plan, do a plan A. And if you don't get the dice rolls you want, you have a plan B. And a lot of different things that you can do. You can go and get different resources if the... First one you want doesn't work through and stuff like that, so it's pretty cool. Yep. It's a good like one. It. It's a good little... I like it. This this may have been the first dice placement game we played. Yes, it was. I think it was. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but there's several different ones. Um, if you haven't tried this one out and you like dice placement that, that you've experienced other games, this is a good one to, to grab, especially if you like sci-fi. Yeah, I was going to say, this is a solid sci-fi game. There you go. My number 82, Alien Frontiers. Very cool, very cool. I like that game. All right, last one for this time around. Last one. Drop 34 places. Oof. But it's still awesome because it's still on your It's still on the list. This one might make Rebecca cry a little bit. We'll see. It is The Networks. What is wrong with you, man? There's a lot of good games in the world. And this is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. So The Networks, it is a... Uh, card drafting game i guess card mm -hmm. drafting so basically you're a network executive you're putting on a lineup of shows so you basically have different time slots that you're trying to fill with different shows you're putting actors on that show you're I mean, advertising during the show all in effort to get victory points and all the little shows are like uh i guess puns and, <laughs> and spoofs, spoofs off of, of, real of other shows. clothes other shows yes um i was gonna pull out and name a few so you can see um um, they also have some of the stars, like, they have some of the stars, you right. have that kid from the commercial. Then you have Celebrity Chef. And you can see some of these are, like, a reference, like, public television legend. Looks suspiciously like Bob Ross. You know, just <laughs> things like that. There's these all these touches, and then the shows, um, <laughs> they're just, some of them are really bad, like, um, what's that one? You start out with first shows that are, like, what he have in his pockets and just like really almost creepy like, weird uh, sound shows. Like what's the the, the 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 barcode at the end of the evening on channels? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For some of you, the older people know what that yeah. is. But then they have um, like uh, instead of fringe, they have cringe. Um, the cubicle agents of shampoo instead of shield. You kind of get the idea here. I hope. So, Dexter. She hit on one of the reasons why we love this game is all the basically the, the funny combinations you have when you when you do a show and the actor and the commercial. Old folks complaining. <laughs> so, I think you got the gist of it. It's it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of a midweight euro -y game, card drafting. It's got like set collections, so if you uh, get a certain number of a certain type of show, you get some benefits. Um, just a really solid uh, euro game with a really fun. Very thematic game. Um, I don't know what to say beyond that. It's just a really, really fun game. It, it's one of those games, 
like I've said many times, where you look down and you just laugh at what you've done. Yeah, you got your lineup and stuff, yeah. and you're like, "Oh my gosh, I did not just do that." But it's kind of a it's kind of a, a tight game where you're really, mm-hmm. especially if you're doing that set collection, you're really fighting to get certain types of shows and things like that. It's it's not a kind of a free, easy free flowing game. It's no. guy. It's pretty. You're pretty cut. It's cut pretty, it's pretty if you want yeah, it to be. It's pretty tight cutthroat game. So. But it's fun at the same time because we usually ham it up and we're like, and at 8 o'clock today we're going to have this cheesy show. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Brought to you by random orange juice commercial. Yep. You know, just... <laughs> so that's the last one for this time around. My number 81, The Networks. So, so good. Such a good let's, one. as always, preview the next section. Ooh, what shall we hear? The next section is our first really mixed bag of stuff. So we've got, hold on to your hats, we got three games that went down, one, two, four games that went up, one that stayed exactly the same, Wow! and two new games. Crazy. <laughs> it is the crazy, we'll call it the crazy section. And in fact, this is the first section that has a game I do not own. What? what? So we'll see you next time.